Okay, everybody. <clears throat> I hope you can hear me well. Um, this is my talk on public money, public cloud, global problems need global solutions. And in the next 30 minutes, I will tell you a bit about our public money, public code campaign, and also what happened during the Corona crisis and why free software is a good solution in order to tackle this crisis when it comes to software or technical solutions. So first of all, the Free Software Foundation Europe is a charity that empowers users to control technologies. And among these users are not just us or companies, but also governments, public bodies, and so on. And um, so we will focus in the next 30 minutes on um, public bodies and how they and how shall they use free software. So let me start with this uh, comic. So I guess you are all familiar with the US nuclear chain of command. So there's the president and the secretary of defense and so on. And you all know there is this red button. But the question always is, uh, who installed the red button and what does the red button do? And so therefore we need transparency in order to see if the chain of command is followed, if the laws are followed, and if the red button is going to do what it shall do. And so therefore it's not just about transparency, but it is a first um, a very important thing, but there are four freedoms of free software. Um, and uh, I will tell you in the next 30 minutes also why these four freedoms are especially important when it comes to um, government actions. So the first freedom of free software is to use it. Then you can study it, you can share it, and you can improve it. This means you can use the software for any purpose without any restrictions. You can study the code as it is transparent, so it can be analyzed by anyone. So this is the red button case. You can share it with others, so without any limitations, and also the price doesn't matter, so the free and free software doesn't come from free beer, but it's about these four freedoms. And also you are free to improve or modify the software, so you can adapt it to your needs, and also you are free to give it back to the community, and um, so therefore whenever we have these four freedoms, then it is free software, and it is very important to have free software in place in order to tackle the crisis. So why should you support free software, but also why should especially governments support free software? So first of all, it's about digital sovereignty. So in order to establish trustworthy system, public bodies must ensure they have the full control over the software and the computer systems they are using. This is a very important and a key point. And also another main argument is that public bodies are financed through taxes. So they must make sure they spend the funds in the most efficient way possible. And these both things can guarantee by the use of free software. So it becomes a bit clearer if you compare it to proprietary software or um, proprietary um, yeah, um, um, so solutions on the market. So first of all, you have a problem with the interoperability. So um, it's um, a problem to have proprietary solutions um, which can be connected to each other where you can share data, documents, and so on. Um, so normally um, you end up in a vendor login, which means um, you have to choose um, from the bunch of software from one vendor and um, you can only um, have this interoperability guaranteed if you are using the systems of this vendor. Also, when it comes, for example, to updates or maintenance or um, things like this, you always have to come back to this vendor in order to make sure that your software is up to date or even if you uh, want to adapt something, if you want to modify something, then you always have to go back to this one vendor and ask him, to do something and this comes with unpredictable costs uh, for the future because um, this one vendor then um, yeah, can make the price for you or <laughs> at least he will make the price um, more or less as he wish. And so therefore this uh, comes with unpredictable costs for you in the future. So this vendor login is a major issue when it comes to proprietary software. Also, especially as we've seen during the Corona crisis, there's a low acceptance by citizens when it comes to closed source proprietary solutions or software. And um, um, if you have a look at this all, you have to pay for licenses. So um, to use the software, you have to pay a license fee. And this, is, this investment is completely lost um, once you are <clears throat> using proprietary software, so you can't take the money in order to, for example, modify your software by your own. 
And also there are some security issues. Um, so uh, it's a bit harder to look in the code of the proprietary software and so therefore to find bugs or backdoors, for example. And so free software is here also a solution. So and if we compare it to free software, all these um, points here, then we see that we have the interoperability by default due to open standards. So it's very easy to share data and information um, between free software solutions. Um, and also you have the independence through free licenses. So you have these four freedoms, for example, to um, adapt the software to your needs, to uh, have tailored uh, software which fits to, uh, to your needs and also to uh, modify it later on and to share it with others. So all the four freedoms I just mentioned. And also this gives you the possibility to collaborate together and thus uh, share risks and costs. So. For example, especially when it comes to public administrations, the demands are more or less equal. So, um, and therefore it makes a lot of sense to collaborate here and to uh, work on a common software solution, for example. And also it's transparent by default, as I just said, uh, around the four freedoms. And though therefore also the acceptance by the citizens uh, is guaranteed and everybody can see what the code does, what the red button does. And so therefore this is uh, also a pretty good idea. And what we've seen on the market is um, that there's a strong involvement of local partners when um, um, public bodies are procuring free software. I have some figures here for you as well in the next slide. And you have this transparent code. So this makes it easier to check for bug bugs or uh, backdoors or any, any um, or similar um, things. So um, you can uh, more easily uh, make sure that your software is secure. In general, free software isn't secure by default, but you have the chance to um, modify the code easily and therefore, for example, um, uh, around bugs and stuff like this. So if you compare it, it's a very good idea to use free software. And um, especially when it comes to governments, public bodies, uh, it, it becomes very clear that there are good arguments to do so. And um, as I just mentioned, let's uh, have a quick look on the market. So um, for now, governments are amongst the largest purchasers of um, IT goods and services and comprise up to 27% of the revenue of software firms. So this means normally they are a strong, a key player on the market. But to be honest, they are not. So they are all fragmented. They are procuring for their own. They are doing or looking for their own solutions and so on. And therefore, um, these 27 percent might look like a huge player on the market. But at the moment, they are not a key player. It's just like they're buying, 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 paying for licenses and so on. So imagine what would happen if the governments or public bodies are investing this budget into free software. I guess um, our world would look a bit different now. And when we see or when we have a look at um, regulations happening, for example, um, here I have the um, example of France, we see that it's also good for economy to uh, switch to free software. So we see in France that there is, a, let's say, a free software friendly regulation in place. And this already led to um, the fact that there is an increase in companies that use free software. There's an increase of number of IT related startups. There's an increase of employees. Um, that's, that's for sure. And also what's very, very important is that there is a yearly decrease in software related patterns. And so you can see if you are starting to work on this and if you have, um, or if you're starting to work on your regulation and if you are going more into the direction of free software, then it um, also helps um, directly your local market. We also see this with uh, Barcelona. So they are also collaborating with other cities and they have, a, um, they have some rules and they're kind of strict um, uh, in, the, in the national um, feel that they say 70% of the software budget have to be invested in free software. And this led to the fact that from 3,000 companies um, they worked with in the last year, 60% of them have been SMEs. So you can see it's good for your local market and it's good for small and medium enterprises. And your invest investments are not uh, anymore lost uh, for licenses, but you can also foster your local IT market. So uh, to sum up, um, 
for governments, it's important to use free software because they have strong partners in their region, especially SMEs, small and medium enterprises. They are um, able to have a tailored software that uh, suits, their, suits their needs and not a vendor's business model. That, so they are free to have a software which is uh, exactly done for them. And also with the transparent process, you don't have to reinvent the wheel again and again. So you can share expertise, you can share costs, and also you can use um, what other us have already done so and this is a very important point that you don't have to reinvent the wheel especially when it comes to international and cross-border cooperation during a crisis so what we've seen during the corona crisis is that there is a global problem and that we need global solutions because th um, this crisis is uh, globally cross borders and therefore we have to work together across borders so the global crisis comes when it comes to software demands with very similar demands. So uh, for sure, it's not everywhere in the world the same, but um, the solutions which we have been looking for are more or less similar and the demands and needs are um, yeah, similar. So there is a specific need for hardware and a specific need for software. And um, just for few examples uh, you um, also um, figured out I guess this is um, solutions for home office or remote working like um, also video conferencing tools and so on and also this is was very important the debate around tracing apps or the there is still a debate and um, yeah so this debate showed us that it's very important to have free software and the global solution for this is that we need this interoperability due to open standards because we need to work together across borders. We need the free licenses in order to make sure that we can share software, especially uh, also with countries who are not having the resources to develop software at the moment, for example, but they desperately need this software. So why not just sharing it with others? Um, but um, yeah, so that's a, that's a good uh, thing to do so and also what we've seen in many cases that there's also a collaboration across borders and thus you can foster innovation which is also very important to have a fast solution in place uh, which can be then also modified by others um, across borders you have the acceptance um, due to the transparency um, we will especially uh, around the tracing apps uh, we have seen that transparency is a major argument in order to convince people to use these apps and also you can involve all stakeholders uh, which are somehow working on this this doesn't mean that there's uh, need only be have uh, that, that this have only have to be coders um, there are so many stakeholders with so many knowledge around and so therefore it's a it's a good solution um, to have um, free software um, in place in order to make sure that everybody can work on a good solution. And so let's have a look at the concrete example of these tracing apps and um, how the debate uh, was running. So in the very beginning of this debate, we stepped in um, and uh, reached out to decision makers and said there are three demands from our side for these apps. So first of all, they have to be used voluntarily. Um, they have to respect fundamental rights and they uh, have to be free software. And um, so that's why um, we also, um, with, with these three demands, we entered the debate and um, yeah, our arguments were well received. So for example, the World Health Organization followed in May 2020 our demand and um, released the yeah, some some considerations and um, said that uh, if there are these apps in place, these tracing apps, then they have to be uh, fully transparent and also they have to be open source. And um, so also within the European Union, um, they followed our our demands. So within the eHealth network, which is a, um, a network of member states and the European Commission, they released. Um, these common toolbox for member states and um, set some recommendations on how these apps should look like. And there the European Commission together with the member states said um, that um, the apps have to be published um, transparent in order, and this is very important to make sure uh, that they can be reused, that there is this interoperability. And also they made a point about uh, security as the code is transparent. And so, um, 
this was um, a major thing for us that the European Commission also not just followed us on the um, point of transparency, but also interoperability, the reuse um, factor, and also the security argument. So, and um, what happened um, afterwards is that uh, many countries um, released their apps as free software. Um, there is, for example, here um, on, on the Git, um, and where you can see all the apps in the world for now, uh, which are uh, released under a free and open source license. And um, yes, and also the European Commission um, just started to um, make sure that these apps can work together. So because uh, in the beginning of this crisis, we have been all in the lockdown. And so first of all, it was in more or less important to have these apps available in your country. Um, but uh, after the lockdown, people started to travel again, also across borders. And um, as you know, we have a lot of member states. And if every member state has a, their own solution, um, which is um, not interoperable, then you will have problems in order to make sure to trace contacts also across borders. And so therefore, um, the European Commission um, also um, released the implementing decision on that and uh, again strengthen the point of interoperability of these apps and so therefore they need to be um, free software and so thus you can make sure that um, at least in Europe um, with most of the member states um, you can um, have an app which is able to communicate with the app from another country and so uh, you can trace these um, um, or you can use these tracing apps also across borders. And this is only be possible um, due to the fact that it is released as a free software. So we've seen around the um, Corona tracing app debate that um, the use of free software is very important in order to tackle um, these crises, which come, uh, which are a, yeah, global crises and uh, where things happening across borders. What we've also seen is that there uh, were loads of hackathons during the last um, months and weeks. And the thing is that most of them have been funded by governments. And so therefore, um, we also stepped into the debate and said only free software creates global solutions with all the arguments you just heard. And um, unfortunately, we don't have uh, or we haven't been successful with all of these hackathons. So for example, the global hack Hackathon doesn't uh, release uh, saying that the solutions have to be free software in the end. Um, but here you can see example on how we tried also to reach out. So we also use social networks and not just mailings and personal contacts, but we try to make it a public debate around that. And um, so this strategy also helped us with some other hackathons, for example, in Germany, uh, the results have been uh, released under a free software license. So you see there's still um some a lot of <laughs> room for improvement especially when it comes to hackathons and that our arguments are just heard in some parts of the debate but not um, everywhere and so therefore it's important to um yeah to still reach out to decision makers and tell them about the advantages of using free software especially when it comes to such a global crisis and also, um, we've seen that for remote working, uh, loads of us had problems, companies had problems, but also governments and public bodies had problems. So they had to choose, uh, for example, solutions for video conferencing tools and um, other tools to collaboratively work together. And um, so therefore, we also, together with our community, started to write uh, in a wiki and to bring together all free software solutions we or our community have tested so far in order to present alternatives so that not everybody have to go to Zoom, for example, but uh, to use uh, Jitsi or Big Blue Button. And so we also tried um, to collect it and to spread the word about uh, free software alternatives, which um, can be more or less easily used. Um, this is a living document. So if you have uh, any solutions in place, um, please reach out to us. We are happy to um, add them in our wiki or uh, if you have an account there, please also just add them. I think this is also something very important to not um, just um, yeah, say it have to be free software, but also to show that there are already very good solutions in place. 
And also what we've seen during the crisis was from the company side um, that uh, many companies started to promote their um, proprietary software as free software. And so what we've done is to write a longer text on this and also, again, uh, refer to the four freedoms and go through the most um, strangest um, advertisements we have seen. And I uh, have some for you here, which I want to present to you. So for example, they um, offered a software for free, but time limited. So this is clearly not a free software um, because it's very likely that you have to pay fees for using the software after the crisis. Also, um, what we've seen is that uh, software can only be used for some work workstations or by a limited number of users. And this is also clearly not free software because we know the fear for freedoms guarantee that you can um, use it for as many workstations and for as many users you wish. Um, also, sometimes the word trial was included um, in the advertisement uh, around a proprietary software um, promoted as free software. And this is also, again, clearly not free software because after the trial period ends, you have to pay the full fees for the tools. Um, and then this is also something which happened quite often that um, some vendors um, release their software for free for hospitals, schools, or other specific sectors which have been hit by the crisis very hard. But also, this is not free software. Um, and uh, you might up end up here in a, a vendor login very quickly um, because the For Freedom guarantees you that it's not only available in hospitals, but you can use it for every um, sector you wish. And um, also, it's very likely that once you um, started to use this um, uh, proprietary software that you uh, might have updated and upgraded it again and then you have to pay for the license uh, in the near future um, and the most strangest thing I, <laughs> I have seen uh, was a commercial for um, uh, proprietary software with the advertisement of around free software because you can win a license. Um, I mean, this is also, again, clearly not free software. And even if you are one of the lucky winners, uh, <laughs> you um, uh, have to um, pay one day for the software. Um, so also when it comes to updates and upgrades again. So, and the point is what I want to say is it's really important to, um, to have solutions in place so this is a learning from this crisis so that we need more free software um, solutions, especially for governments. So and also that they can make, can make sure that um, citizens then will have also secure software in place and uh, not have to search for the quickest and uh, probably best solution. And then uh, after half a year, um, they are ending uh, in a vendor login. And this is not helpful and all, at all and won't help to tackle a crisis. Um, also, sometimes uh, we've seen that uh, creators said they will make the tool open source. Um, uh, I mean, this is also currently not free software. And also, you have to be careful with these kind of promises. So um, because there might be only um, free parts, uh, um, they might uh, only free parts of the software and uh, might then stop supporting the tool with updates and so then you are forced to buy an upgrade uh, and then again, the non-free version. And so um, also, and this is something where you should uh, have a look at. Also, um, as, a, as a last point on that, I want to channel the Software Freedom podcast, which we made with the New Health Project uh, just, uh, I think, one hour ago. Uh, Louis gave a talk on, on the project and um, yeah, you know, if you want to hear a podcast and uh, on that, um, you feel free to go on our website. This is a very interesting project. And here you can um, see that there have been already good solutions in place before the crisis. And this is, I think, something where governments should invest money uh, in free software projects like GNU Health and not uh, proprietary software, uh, which pushes you into vendor logins and don't give you the sovereignty to act fast if a crisis appears. And already before this crisis started, um, we together with hundred organizations and tens of thousands of people demanded that publicly financed software developed for the public sector must be available under a free software license. And uh, our learning from this crisis is that it is um, now even more important than ever before. 
And so therefore we have this public money, public code in, in place where we are demanding. So if it's public money, it should be public code as well. Um, here you can see some of our supporters. Um, so even have if you or your organization haven't signed uh, this call so far, feel free to do so and also uh, reach out to us if you um, see somebody who could um, or should sign this and we will also reach out and um, yeah, so we have also several ways in um, how you can help us to make free software um, the solution for, for government. So we are uh, not only working tasks, but especially with this campaign, we've seen again that governments need to be convinced to use more free software. And um, yeah, it's about many small people in many small places who do many small things that can alter the face of the world. So please help us uh, in order to do so and to convince governments to um, switch to free software because um, as we've seen during the crisis, it's desperately needed that we have free software solutions in place in order to make sure that we can work together across borders to tackle this crisis. So, and I think now we have uh, five minutes left for questions. If I can't answer your questions right now, please uh, also um, send me an email or um, reach. And then, um, yeah, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, so I, I see a question on um, um, the free beer <laughs> argument and that um, some companies are not giving back if I uh, get it right. So yeah, for sure, that's a problem that um, some companies just use it. Um, but especially um, with this campaign, we are trying to reach out to governments and convince them to um, share their code and also work together. And so I think, uh, as I just said, um, the uh, Public bodies are one of the key players on the market and they can change um, the face of the software market if they step in and start to create these solutions and share it with us and also with others. And so, um, as we've seen also, this uh, helps to um, foster the IT market, especially around SMEs. And I think um, there are loads of good SMEs around to um, also give back. And um, so a first step is then um, to, to convince governments to also step in here. Okay, so I just just wanted to point out the the fact of uh, of the schools, which are really important. They are uh, obviously uh, public administrations uh, most of the time. So I mean, there are also private schools, obviously, but uh, talking widely, the, the the most of the schools are public, and uh, I think that it is really important to care about them, just because um, you know the schools are the starting point from the, the society and the future of our society so i think that this kind of uh, campaign should be uh, brought there uh, as a first place as a first uh, step and then try to to begin from there just because uh, it is important for the whole administrations but there it is it is also about you know the um plurality of uh, of solutions of um, available uh, possibilities, so that they should be uh, uh, they should teach this kind of um, topics and this kind of you know notions to the uh, to the people to the guys uh, growing and attending the schools, and and possibly use in the schools it's themselves, and uh, and that's it. But just to, to close, I, I can say that we had. Uh, I used to share um, a, a blog post uh, advising that we in Italy have a public administration who has um, shared, uh, how to say, they have set up many uh, servers with, for example, GTC and kind of this kind of stuff and big blue button and whatever. And they uh, made them available for the public schools, but they have been completely ignored even being a public administration itself so they it looks like the the left hand doesn't know the right hand in our italian public administration so that's really sad 
and uh, and that's another reason to to go there and let them know that there is uh, public uh, code and public software and free software and whatever. And that's it. And thank you for the speech. It was really interesting. Thanks a lot. So I'm I'm uh, totally with you. Uh, I would be really interested in this Italian case. So if you could send me an email around that, uh, that would be awesome. So I can follow up on that. And um, yeah, so else I think uh, my time is over. Um, thanks for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of uh, this conference. And yeah, thanks a lot. See you.